So, since I'm officially the best chess player on YouTube, I decided to speedrun Chess Former, or Chess with Gravity, to prove that I am the best at any version of chess. The objective of this game is to get to this Red King with one of your blue pieces and to exercise your Second Amendment rights on him. There's things that you would see in a normal chess game, like rooks, pawns, kings, queens, etc. And then things that make you wonder if you took too many methamphetamines from that Mexican guy outside of Home Depot. There's 24 levels, but the first few are simple in nature and introduce how the different pieces move. The bishop is somewhat peculiar since it can change from light squares to dark squares depending on where it lands, so it is a bit confusing. On level 4, you finally get to use two pieces, which can stack on top of each other. On level 5, you use the bishop so that the king can get over these two block walls. Because, like in normal chess, the king serves little to no purpose, and really nobody would care if he just didn't exist. Which is actually what my therapist said about me last weekend when my card was declined. Anyways, in level 6, they introduced the knight, probably my favorite piece. Level 7 took me an unholy amount of time to first figure out, but it makes you maneuver your knights around in a suspect manner until you can take the king. How about that loading screen though? I would give it a solid 5 out of 6. The 8th level is surprisingly easy, but they introduce these floors which you can move through, which will come up a lot later on. When I first did level 9, I invested more time into learning it than my relationship with my parents. For some reason, this was just hard for my brain cell to comprehend, but maybe it paid off in the long run? Yeah, probably not, I regret my life choices. Level 10. Now, not to quote Donald Trump, but you have to build a great wall in order to get your rook across the border, I mean, across the board. This next level is pretty easy. Your king just uses these pawns to journey to the other side where he can commit first degree murder on the red king. Now, when you're learning level 12, it really makes you think about the moves you make, since I probably messed this up more times than I can even count on one finger. This was the level that made me question if I even wanted to speedrun this, and unfortunately, I still decided to do it. Level 13, the women finally get out of the kitchen and onto the chessboard. The queen is introduced, and like in normal chess, this piece is completely overpowered. They should probably nerf them sometime in the future by maybe taking away their voting rights. So level 14 is a place I probably lost most time on the speedrun. I learned this new strategy, which is why I was hesitating so much, and I couldn't remember where to move the pieces. At least, that's all the excuses I can come up with right now. Oh yeah, there's also a lot of ads on this site, so I paused the timer when they play, and I actually had to reload the page since some ads just stay there indefinitely. But whatever, we're on to level 15, and we get the pawn promotion feature. Pretty cool. We can promote to a queen here. Again, this comes back later on, so it is very important. Level 16, you just gotta use your brain, which I'm not the best at, so this took me a long time to learn on my first attempts. Man, not to change the subject, but what do you guys think about this banger soundtrack? It makes my teeth feel loose every time I hear it, you know what I mean? Honestly, inspirational. Yeah, level 17, we get this key feature, and when any of your pieces get the key, it unlocks these doors. And I think this is the first, like, non-chess feature, besides the gravity, and the walls, and how the pieces interact, and the music. Besides that though, level 18 is probably my favorite, not too hard to figure out, everything's pretty close together, so you can honestly just click really fast and feel kind of like a pro gamer, aka depressed. Level 19, you don't actually want to get the keys. You need to use the yellow locks to sand on, so you gotta do some parkour skills. It's pretty fun once you get it, and I definitely did not watch a tutorial on how to do this after I started raging and threw my computer across the room, causing my dog a moderate to severe concussion. On level 20, you get to stand on this pressure plate thing, which holds open this purple door. This is going to come back, but way harder in a few levels. And honestly speaking, on everything I love, on my great grandfather's pacemaker, I did this level without a tutorial. It did take a while to figure out though, and maybe 50 milligrams of Adderall. No, just kidding, I don't do that stuff. I only do cocaine. Now, this pressure plate level isn't even that hard, but it does take a long time to do. So I guess in the meantime, I'll tell you the story of how I met Kim Jong-un. Two weeks ago, I was at the Los Angeles Public Library in the movie section, and a slightly bulbous Asian man walks up to me and says, hey, are you that croissant guy on YouTube who makes the best content in the history of mankind? And I was like, yeah, I am. Are you the Kim Jong guy from North Korea? And then he called the police, and I'm on house arrest for the next uh, two months. The level 22 is just chaotic. Every piece plays a role in this, except this pawn, L pawn moment. So it's pretty important to position everything correctly, and you also need to promote to a knight here. And there's another ad, so I had to reload the page. Level 23 is probably the most confusing, emotional, and impressive thing that I've seen since September 11th, 2000. So you have to start with promoting to two knights to get the key. Then you promote to a queen, you send a knight in to step on the purple pressure plate. This knight has to go all the way to the other side of the board where you're gonna need another queen, and then you can finally reach the king. 
And the final level, level 24. This one takes by far the longest. There's a bunch of different strategies on how to complete it, but the first time I did it, I learned a slow solution, and then after watching the current world record speedrun, I just copied his method. Except I do it like 10 times slower. I think this level alone took me like a whole minute to do. But even though this takes a long time, instead of telling you another Kim Jong story, I'll just let you look at my beautiful gameplay before us. Truly, one of the top 7 wonders of the world. Anyway, here's my final time. This puts me at 4th place on speedrun.com, and if you beat me, you have no life and no friends. Okay, goodbye.